this is going to be a good review. <laughs> Welcome back to another GeekWatt video. Today I'm going to be looking at this. This is the Cooler Master Neptune 120XL. And as the name implies, this is a 120mm cooler. Now, let's break it down a little bit. What does the XL mean? Now, that basically means we've got a nice big radiator, but we've actually got two fans in a push pull configuration. So we've got this fan that's going to uh, pull the air, push the air through the radiator, and the one on the back side, which is going to continue to pull that air through to essentially mean more airflow and better cooling. So let's start off with the physical overview, and then we'll look at my opinions performance all that good stuff so you get a 120 millimeter radiator uh, which which it is connected uh, to two fans now these are corner masters silencio fans uh, so that's their higher end fans they're very very quiet and i found them to be very very quiet as well uh, you can't always believe what you read on boxes but in this case they were very very quiet now uh, the tubing on this unit is a little bit different the tubing on this unit is fep as opposed to rubber now fep is cooler masters uh, they, which they claim FEP tubing is stronger, uh, more resistant to kinking, all that kind of stuff. And I can say for the life of me, I couldn't get this tubing to kink. Like, I just couldn't get it to kink, which which has to be a good thing. The tubing is nice and long, actually, as well, which means you're able to get that radiator. If you've got a slightly bigger case, you are able to reach uh, those mounting points. But it does mean that sometimes you may have a little bit of extra tube uh, that you need, to, uh, you need to put away somewhere or try and cram in or what have you. Now let's move on to the pump. On the top we've got a Cooler Master logo which illuminates white, which I really, really like. There's no RGB control, uh, but that doesn't really bother me because white fits in with literally any build colour scheme. You're always going to have black and white in a the build. They're the two colours that you really, unless you're fully modding out a whole system, you can't really get away from. There's going to be black and there's going to be white in basically every single system that you build. Now Cooler Master have got an exclusive pump uh, in, in, in here as well, uh, which is always good, but you know exclusive things certain things can be exclusive to different people without too much bother so having an exclusive pump to me isn't too much of a selling point but nevertheless it's a very very quiet pump as they advertise and it's a very efficient pump which really to me is, is all that matters now this cpu pride provides mounting for all of the, the the most recent and some slightly older uh, architect some slightly older architectures and cpu socket designs namely lj 1150 lj 1151 which is the new socket 2011 v3 so all the enthusiast stuff as well as the fm2 and fm2 plus and am3 and am3 plus uh, sockets uh, from uh, amd just to name a few now let's move on uh, to to the, the intricacies of this product and the little uh, bits that you, you may not notice or may not think about now despite this being a 120 millimeter radiator with any radiator it is slightly taller than 120 millimeters and that's purely because you've got to get the pump to connect uh, the tube sorry to connect to the radiator that so that is something to keep in mind if you've got a very tight 120 millimeter mounting point if you look at the fans the fans themselves are 120 millimeters not necessarily the whole uh, the whole radiator if you will you've got neptune 120 uh, xl uh, in a nice silver on on the side of the unit as well so it's visible through your side panel window so now that we've got the, the design out of the way and all that kind of stuff let's move on to what gets what you come in what comes in the box so if you open up the box which you have to do from the side which i was uh, i made the mistake of not doing if you open up the box you get a cardboard inside which keeps everything fitting nice and snug you get no foam to absorb any kind of um, any big impacts if you will which may be a problem to some people but you've got to remember you aren't just shipping out this box this box which is covering the whole frame uh, will be in um, the box will be in another box whether you get it from Amazon or whatever, whatever, whatever retail you get it from. On that note, Amazon links for this product will be, of course, in the description below. Now you get all the mounting for all the different, uh, all the different socket types and architectures, all the screws, which are all in really nice little bags as well to keep things nice and neat. You get uh, an instruction manual of how to install and installation-wise amazing but i'm going to get onto that in a moment's time you also get some cooler master th cooler master thermal paste which is not just enough to facilitate for one install but also two or three if you were going to screw things up like i tend to do and that's basically it you also get these little pouches of things which keep it like fresh you get them in like every product ever but i still don't know what they're called so you know moving uh swiftly on before I cover the uh, before I cover the temperatures and the performance and that kind of stuff, I want to talk quickly about the installation process. Now, whilst there's nothing majorly groundbreaking about how you have to install in the installation process of this cooler, it's certainly easy, it's quick and efficient. The back plate goes on like a dream. Everything fits in lovely. If you're on Intel's X99 platform, you're great because you've got like four screws to screw in because of the integrated back plate. On the X99 motherboard, something AMD need to bring please thank you amd but 
my my uh, my sense of incapability and my uh, my lack of, my lack of skill seems to come out from hibernation every time I have to install a CPU cooler. However, this time things just seem to go seamlessly, which was amazing. Even with the simplest of coolers, I always get stuck. I always get frustrated with CPU coolers, but this one was actually really nice, really easy, really quick to install, which to me is always a bonus because you want things to be easy to install because you know you don't want to get frustrated when you're building your PC, and the CPU cooler is often the largest headache of all of them. So what about performance? Because that's where it really matters, right? Now, over Twitter, I reached out to a couple of people with uh, different coolers, slightly bigger coolers, smaller coolers, all that kind of stuff, and tested this cooler against my own uh, Noctua, uh, Noctua um, single tower cooler and the Hyper 212 Evo, along with AMD's new Wraith cooler, the stock cooler with uh, some of AMD's hotter chips, to see how it performed. And... This was locate, located in the rear of my case, so as an exhaust. Uh, my case follows a very positive air pressure. I've got quite a few fans pulling air into the case, so it was quite a, a positive, uh, it was quite a, a be not a best case scenario, but it was a good scenario for the cooler. I do have two GPUs as well in my enclosure, which just heat things up uh, quite a little bit as well, just to uh, just to test things out. I, I, I stress tested both of these with Fermat, just to increase that case temperature. And aside from using synthetic benchmarks, the performance of which you can see on your screen now, I thought, what better way to test the unit than by rendering out five videos. Now, I render videos all the time. It's a professional content creation workflow that so many people who buy products like this will be using. And it was insane. I couldn't get the thing. I couldn't get my AMD FX 8370 overclocked to 4.85 gigahertz from 4.3 out of the box to get above 40 degrees Celsius. Like, what? Mine is completely blown. I couldn't get it above 40 degrees Celsius in a exhaust formation. Now I looked at, I spoke to a couple of people on Twitter as I previously mentioned, but didn't actually finish my point. Surrounding competitors coolers, some with uh, 240 millimeter radios, radiators on them, and some with 140 millimeter radios, radiators on them. And given the 120 millime millimeter size of the radiator on this unit, I was astonished, absolutely astonished, with the performance that it gave out. It was. It was incredible. For overclocking, you've got loads of headroom on any unlocked chip with this water cooler, which for, which for me, if you are going to buy uh, this all-in-one water cooler, grab yourself, um, grab yourself a, you know, a, a nice juicy overclock, grab yourself an unlocked chip, and you're happy days. A couple of other things to note on this uh, CPU cooler, you have got a fill port, which you don't need uh, because it does come pre-filled with water from the factory. However, if you do need to use it years down the line, for example, if some of your water has evaporated uh, as a natural process or stuff like that, you can do that, but it does void the warranty. But the performance of this for me was absolutely staggering, and that's why it gets awarded my GeekerWatt Gold Award. I was astonished with how it performed the price it comes in at it's a great value unit it's cheaper than the the 240 millimeter radi radiators it was it was insane and my hat really has to go off to call master because you always see callers state fancy features what well, any product go uh, we've got an exclusive pump we've got this we've got different tubing but to see it in practice and to see it working and to see some of those features now equated over to their slightly newer higher end master case coolers shows that the stuff that they innovated on this cooler has worked. And for me, that is a complete and utter godsend. So congrats, Cooler Master. I love the design. I love the performance. And this will be being used in my upcoming X99 Broadwell EPC because it's an enthusiast piece of gear and a not so enthusiast price. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like rating if you want to buy this unit or all that kind of stuff, then check Amazon links in the description. I'll also leave a link to Cooler Master's product page for the unit as well. But as always, we will see you in the next GeekerWatt video.